Today is July 24th, 2020. Kent and I, the stick, also known to some as TJ, Tom or the stick by some of us. Spencer and Stacy are here. We're getting ready to go to mom's service. The lawn guys are here. That's why it's a little bit loud. But I wanted to show you where mom lived these last 40 something years here in Washington State. So right now I'm in the backyard. There's a little pretty flowers. There's their awesome compost bin. Pastas, plants, all kinds of pretty things. Flowers, but it's past time for them. They have summer bloomers and spring bloomers. There's the big pecker. He's been around for a while. Everybody loves him. Hi, buddy. How you doing? Bud light cans hanging on the tree. Why not? Why the hell not can you have bud light cans hanging on a tree? You can if you lived here. Okay, there's the little pecker. Hi! The owl that scared stuff away for like one hour, the first hour we had it. And now the squirrels play with it and knock it over. This is neighbor Fred's house. Right there, had a bird feeder, squirrel feeder. A little shed, a garden shed. There's a lawn guy. There's the back porch. Where the RV lives. And uh, go down this way. There's mom's car and dad's car and the little garden shed. There's a pretty uh, hydrangea I got mom years ago, but it's been a crappy summer. We haven't had much sun. We're going to go around this way. There's another view of the porch. Apple trees. Uh, lavender. The new generator. It's almost hooked up. There. Tom and Gail's car and Stacy and Spencer's car. Our van back over there. Here's the Japanese maple, rhododendrons that bloom red in the spring. There's mom's pot. We didn't do flowers this year, but we will next year. Here is the garage, used to be the garage. There's the front walk. There's the RV. And outwards to the street. Welcome to the Armstrongs. Look there, there's a stick. Hey. Hey, stick. <laughs> Here's downstairs. There's a picture of Dad. He's in a Shriner. Yep. Go downstairs. There's the bin. Pictures of grandmas and grandpas. Grandmas and grandpas. A frog playing a trumpet. Don't ask me why, but here frogs play trumpets. There's Stacy and the gang at uh, Disneyland. There's Kit and I's family. There's me and the stick. Stacy. And there's Grandma Armstrong as a little toddler. The big, big screen. All the pictures. Dad and one of the great grandbabies. Zoom in on this. Stacy made for their 60th anniversary. Isn't that nice? You guys can pause it here if you like so you can read all the goodies. Green leather couch, more family photos, I hope this shows up, here's a band, woohoo, 
rock and roll, baby. Richard, Mikey, Spencer, more family pictures. More family pictures. Here's mom and dad. <laughs> Look at that stick, buddy. There's a family photo. Who I remember taking this photo because I got to stand on a chair. I thought that was pretty cool. Grandpa. Russell. The ladies. Some more family. There's a hearths. You have your family history book. You know who I'm talking about. There's more with the grandkids. There's the 50th anniversary photo that we took. This is before Chloe, so there's no Chloe there. Spencer's pretty young. There's mom and dad's picture. Isn't that nice? And the 50th anniversary. Very good. We'll pan here. Dad did these in college. These pencil drawings, charcoal drawings. Very cool. I bet that was a hard one. Sorry for the reflection, but there's Dad's balloons from his birthday, July the 5th. And here is Go Hawks. Mom and Dad's 61st anniversary posters that the stick and Gail and Stacy and Spencer made. 61 years. Look at that. They made it. They made it 61 years, you guys. That's pretty incredible. Oh my God, who are them people? And then we got the big family photo when Ultra Marie and Olaire were here. Look at them, a bunch of ruffians. Wow, who are those people? Oh, and froze to death. And as soon as I left home, they did this nice den. And yeah. Here's the new generator box back there. Here's one of the pantries full of stuff and stuff. And there's Dad's banjos and more stuff here. And then we got this 19. <laughs> oh, oh, I did. I, I was showing them. Oh, you're showing them. I've been outside, yeah. We'll walk outside and show them what it looks like. But Donna's out here. Sit out here once yeah. in a while. Here's yeah. the flowers. Yep, there's Mom's pretty flowers that we picked out last time we went to Lowe's. The pink is gorgeous. There's a violet. There's some kind of cactus. I don't know. It looks like an alien brain. Hey, look, another owl to scare off the predators. Good job there, buddy. And this cactus started blooming the day Mom passed away. And it's got almost got some little flowers on it. Isn't that nice? Yep. We got these chairs. When we were in San Diego, they're hard as a rock, but they still work good. Mom would like to sit out here in the wheelchair. You have no messages in your mailbox. Main menu. And look at two, let's get some fresh air and look out. There's a the go back in. Cemetery, but we're driving next to the cemetery. It's actually quite beautiful the way they keep the grounds. So pretty. Nice. up there. Somebody's already up there? Is that Alex? Could be. There's Ann. There's Ann. Oh. That's uh, uh
Thank you, everybody. Everybody coming. We're going to have a short ceremony. Uh, I want to turn it over to the chaplain. He's going to have a little guidelines for us to go. And we'll go from there. And everybody's invited. We're going to have a short ceremony. Uh, I want to turn it over to the chaplain. He's going to have a little guidelines for us to go and we'll go from there. And everybody's invited to Brother's Dollar. Everybody know where Brother Dollar's at? Right down the road down here. we got some refreshments and uh, drinks. So if you want to come down later on at Brother Dollar's, you're all welcome to come down there. So with that, turn it over to the chapel. Uh, uh, take a seat if you can. Social distance is best to be made. <laughs> We are here now to bear witness to the life of Donna Lee Armstrong, a life completed, a life beginning, and a life served together here. Uh, Tom has asked for a few things, that we take a moment of silence to gather our thoughts and our memories of Donna. And then after that, we're gonna have to take a few moments to just share stories or thoughts or read some scriptures, poem, hear some music, and we'll offer some sand or flowers. But let's take a moment of silence now to remember that. like to share a story, a favorite time, a touching event related to Donna. Too many. <laughs> I'll share a story. <laughs> My mom was a Navy wife. And Doug was gone a lot. Can I take this off? Dad was gone a lot. To see, you know, I, I just found out in the last few years that he was in Vietnam. And he was gone for a long time, I remember. But, but I was just little. But I remember he was gone for a long, long time. And we take turns sleeping with Mom to keep him company. Because we didn't want her to be alone. And she was. Mom was always there, always, no matter what. We had a bad day, she was there. We had a good day, she was there. She'd share it with you, just like, and she'd be so happy. And if you had a, something bad happen to you, she'd be sad with you and kind of make you think about things in a little different angle than I normally would, because I think a lot like that. <laughs> and I want to think more like Mom. But uh, she was the disciplinarian in the family because Dad was out to see so much. And us kids would get on her nerves. We'd be picking on each other with my little sister <laughs> who's laying right there next to her. And she'd be like, all right, you kids, I've had enough. 
And we'd laugh because we knew we weren't really in trouble. <laughs> and then she'd say, okay, Lisa Lee, Thomas Scott, Stacy Lee, and I've had enough. And then we knew we were kind of in trouble because she used our middle names. <laughs> and then our punishment was usually either the TV guide rolled up <laughs> and whacked on the leg, or this, those really cheap foam flip-flops. And she'd like, that's it, and she'd whack you, and you'd laugh. And then, it was, and then we're like, ooh, you got the flip-flop treat, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And then by the, by the we'd all be laughing, because it didn't hurt. <laughs> but we knew that she, she, that we did wrong, and we would fix it. But it was, it was also kind of a, of a funny thing. And I even got my brother a shirt a couple years ago for Christmas as foot flop survivors. <laughs> <laughs> but my, mom was always there. She was at every recital, every date. I was the one, she helped me fix my hair. And she always wanted to put it in a bun because she thought that looked nice and I hated it. <laughs> and in my sixth grade picture, she put it in a bun with little curls and I got teased all day. <laughs> in my classroom sticking their finger in the hole in the bun and all and I was like I'm never gonna wear a bun ever again because this is terrible she says oh but you look so nice that way and, and the, the, you know, the picture it does look nice and I'm, I'm glad that I didn't fight her too hard on that but, but mom was always and she always cared about everybody else us kids the grandkids Chloe she was so proud of everybody even though we weren't like presidents or owners of big businesses and we didn't own Cadillacs and Rolls Royces and didn't live on a hill. We had humble homes and she was still proud of us because she knew that what we were happy and that's all that counted. And when my sister died, all that was horrible. It just about tore us apart. But they just celebrated 61 years together on their last anniversary in May. They were together for 61 years. And we th went through lots of good times and lots of travels and adventures. Her first home was in uh, Hawaii, where they were alone for like five months and then mom got pregnant with me. And then the party was over. And then 11 months later, my brother followed and then the party was really over. <laughs> and then we moved to Great Lakes and my sister came along and then it was like, that's it. <laughs> but Ma, I remember, I was looking at some pictures the other day from uh, Halloween at the Great Lakes. And we have these goofy costumes on, but we, we just thought it was so cool because Mom made them. Well, my mom made these. You were thinking of the store. And then she went shopping the first time. You know, when we knew we were going to be, I was going to be a grandma, she bought me a white rose bush. And all the flowers I have today for the white rose bush are here to represent each of the, the direct family. And, and that she was so proud of, of all the kids and the grandkids. And the great granddaughter, and, she, and that's that's the future. You know? And uh, I hope that Chloe will remember her, and, and I'll make sure that she does. And uh, <laughs> my mom was the, the nicest person, and she was my hero. She had a stroke. She had colon cancer. She had lung cancer. She beat it. She had emphysema. She had. Uh, and she rose above them every time and she was never felt sorry for herself and, uh, and she had shoulder replacements and then the cancer came back and she never the last thing she told me last month was like I hate this damn virus because I can't do anything fun and she wanted to go to the casino because <laughs> she couldn't get her down the stairs but she took that with a grain of salt so, so we, we did other things instead some things you know, more special to mom and I and we watched like terrible horror movies <laughs> and ate ice cream and pie at the same time <laughs> and we watched things like the creeping eye and you know all these terrible horror movies and we just laughed and laughed and had a good time but I miss her because she, she was always there I mean, she's not but she taught my brother and I what 
and, and we're hugging people and kissing people and we tell people we love them because she taught us that. To show them that people, when you care about somebody, to show them that you love them and say it and love them and, and let them know that you're, you care. And I know a lot of her friends are here today and maybe they would like to say something. But that's all I gotta say. Anybody? Anybody? All right. I don't usually, but she was a great mother-in-law and a great grandma, and she always was positive, and she was always happy. Always. And that's all. She never stopped. She was selfless and took care of everyone else and said to herself. Christmas and Thanksgiving and stuff. We'd start early, and she wouldn't stop until everything was done. Mm -hmm. If I would say, uh, well, it's time for bed, and I didn't brush my teeth, oh man, I'd get it. You gotta brush your teeth. <laughs> you should have a bed. There was no way of getting around it. She didn't take no shit from nobody. <laughs> Especially when it came to brush her teeth for bed. <laughs> to go dancing for your 21st birthday and that's exactly what we did at brothers brother don's we danced to payday daddy all night and it was a pretty good 21st anybody else <laughs> it was my pleasure when i hired her on as our receptionist and we got lots of years of fun and laughter and I always enjoyed her over at our barbecues, and my son just told me last night on the phone to to remember uh, her to you. She he could remember as a as a college kid laughing with her and, and teasing each other, <laughs> and that was a fun memory. He remembers her very well. Thank you, Lisa. Anyone else? Anyone? Tom and Donna had the most inspiring marriage. It was always so great to watch them. And what proud parents and grandparents. You've talked about being a Navy wife, and, and I know that just involves packing boxes and moving and unpacking and getting it squared away. And, all the changes and transitions. But her family always was first, you're right. And even in the last few days, many times she would rouse just enough to say, what about the boxes? And I'm pretty sure she was thinking about the next transition. At one time she said, what about the boxes? Have I done everything I needed to do? Yeah, Tana, you have. Thanks, Tom and family, for sharing her with us. I'm thankful to have known her. She was with Donna up to she died. She's a nurse. She finished her pain for Donna. And she did suffer. Now, I had to little techniques about getting the, the medicine in her down there so, and she put it back, the syringe back deep down in her throat so she would spit it out. And she did that. And she's a guardian angel for the family. And I thank you, my family thanks you. Anyone else? Um, I cut Donna's hair for 16 years. <laughs> she was positive, always happy, but one thing is she liked Lisa's hair short, and I tell you, she hated it long. She, every time she so Lisa would grow her hair out, she'd say, cut Lisa's hair short, cut Lisa's hair short. <laughs> so, we're going to keep it short. We're going to keep it short. <laughs> okay. mm. Want to tell about Princess Day with Monkey? You want to say something, Richard? 
They sent me to Gala. I don't know too. <laughs> the uh, one of the first memories, really, really strong memories, was uh, the first Christmas that I spent with yes. Armstrong family. After it was all, you know, we, we had eaten, everybody was stuffed and uh, feeling pretty good. But Mom was playing in the kitchen. I'm going to help her. So I went in there. The next thing I knew, her and I were in there just having the biggest time singing off key Christmas carols and doing the dishes. <laughs> and uh, when I look back, it, back, it kind of epitomizes her attitude. She always just reveled in the good times. And that's the memory I'm going to take to me is how much she just enjoyed life. I'll miss her. A couple of months ago, Mom and I were talking about having a Princess Day, her and I and Chloe. And Chloe was going to come over and, and we we're going to open up a salon. And Mom put out a tip jar. So you, whatever Chloe did to you, you had to put money in the tip jar. And so we, we did our nails and we not, and she cut Mom's hair a little bit. And we did all kinds of makeup and face painting. And Chloe made a bunch of money that day. And Mom had it all set up with a tip jar and the, the combs and the brushes and all laid out. And we did all kinds of fun things that day, didn't we, honey? Yeah. Well, that was really, really young. I used to get out of line instead of beating me with the bong or the wooden spoon. She would hold me down and tickle me. <laughs> and she tickled me so much that I'm. Not ticklish anymore. <laughs> it's a lot of completely tickling. immune to being tickled. Though. Yeah. We're going to read the 23rd song, which is a favorite of Doug's. We have a copy, as many versions of it as the one we're going to use today. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. The rod and your staff, they come to me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And there's a poem called Footprints that has been a source of strength for the Armstrong family, especially after the passing of Stacy Lynn Armstrong. It goes like this. One night as I dreamed a dream, as I was walking along the beach with my Lord, across the dark sky flashed scenes from my life. For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and one to my Lord. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that at many times along the path of my life, especially at the very lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me, so I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. 
about it, I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why. When I needed you the most, you would leave me. He whispered, My precious child, I love you, and I will never leave you. Never, ever, during your trials and testings, when you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried it. I'd like to hand it over to Tom. He has some things he'd like to say. I love you, Donna. I always have. It's beautiful world. Thank everyone for sharing and being with us. I just thank everybody for coming today. Words are not enough. Uh, after this get together, I think she would like for us to all go down to Brother Don's. He has a little spot laid out for us, got some food. Some refreshments. You're all welcome to come down. It's just right down the hill, about a half a mile down the road. It's a Brother Don's. Everyone's welcome. Uh, I'm sure I'm leaving something out, but you will forgive me. Uh, let me look around and make sure I got everybody. Hey, Dad, tell the story when you asked Mom out and she said no. And he was oh, like, no, I don't know. Oh, that's a great story. <laughs> <laughs> asked her out twice, she turned him down. Uh, and he says, if you want to go out with me, you got to ask me. She had to, she had to pick with the guys there in high school, and I'm, I'm very fortunate that she chose me. But uh, She asked I, him out. I knew I wanted her as soon as I seen her. Uh, sis, Larry, sis got a very, very, very fine sister. I loved her. Uh, this is for the folks back in Terre Haute, Indiana. Go uh, Purple Eagles. Uh, I'd like to turn it back over to the man of the cloth here. We're going to file past the burial site here. Um, family members are invited to take a rose that has been picked from the tree. Sorry, I'll say, say this again. Family members are invited take one of the roses that have been picked from a tree and lower it in. Um, if you'd like to say goodbyes, you should do that as you foul by. Again, Mother Dawn is down the street on the left. We will eat and eat and share life. Thank you. Can you give me a little bit 
Ashes. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. If you care to, if you care so, to add earth to the final nice place you make. Brother Don's favorite place to share memories and yeah, celebrate a life together.